Finally, we discuss the estimation um, issues, and we're going to start with the estimation of the control direct effects. There are two approaches we're going to discuss here. The first approach is to directly use the identification formula. So I reproduced the identification formula for the control direct effects here. And there are two things you have to do. The first is to model like regress y, the outcome on t, m, x, and z. So that's the conditional expectation you see in the formula. The second thing you have to do is to model the distribution, conditional distribution of z post-treatment variable given the treatment and the pre-treatment covariates x. I want to note that this step might be difficult if z is high dimensional. That is, if you have lots of post-treatment confounders, this uh, will require modeling those post-treatment confounders jointly, which may not be may not necessarily be easy. Okay, so that's basically the two things you have to do. And once you have that, the identification formula suggests the following estimation procedure. The first, you're gonna predict the z, the post-treatment confounder, given t and x, the observed x, and t equal one. Okay, so you set the t equal one and then predict the z. You're going to plug that z into the regression function uh, while setting the t is still equal to 1. You're going to repeat the same thing, uh, except that t is going to be next set to 0. And then you take the difference between those two computed quantities. Once you have that, uh, you will just average over the distribution of x which is typically done by just taking the sample average. So you take, you do this for each observation and then compute the difference and um, take the uh, sample average and use that as an estimate of the control direct effects. Now again, the one disadvantage of this is that you have to model the, uh, there's additional modeling step of Z given T and X. The second approach I'm going to discuss is to sidestep this additional modeling step of post-treatment confounder. So here we're going to assume additional assumption is no interaction. What this equation says is that causal effect of M, the mediator on the outcome, does not depend on the post-treatment confounder, given T and X. In other words, the treatment variable and X, the pre-treatment confounder, our covariates explains the heterogeneity. And once we condition on T and X, the post-treatment confounder Z doesn't explain the heterogeneity of the effect of the mediator on the outcome. Right? So the mediator, uh, the effect of the mediator on the outcome holding the treatment constant and X constant doesn't depend on the post-treatment variable. If this assumption holds, in addition to the identification assumptions, uh, sequence show on confoundedness assumption that I discussed earlier, then we can use a different approach, which is called structural nested mean models. And then let me uh, explain structural nested mean models using the linear model, which is um, for the simplification. But this approach works for other models as well. Okay. The first step is to estimate the regression function. So here I'm going to regress y on m and t and x and z, but crucially, we cannot interact, interact the mediator with the post-treatment uh, variables uh, z, right? Because of that, no interaction assumption I discussed in the previous slide. So we cannot have those interaction. The effect of m conditional on t and x cannot depend on z, okay? But otherwise, you can have other type of uh, regression, like you can, uh, you can interact T and M or M and X. Next, we're going to compute something called the BRIP function. What this BRIP function does is it describes how the um, mediator affects the outcome conditional on T and X. So for each value of little t, we're going to um, look at what that uh, effect of the mediator is for any um, little m relative to um, a particular value m, m0, m0, uh, that you choose. Okay, so in the regression model, this difference is um, the effect of m is represented by the coefficient alpha 2. Okay, 
And if I had, if I want to know what's the effect of changing m from uh, m0 to m, it would be the alpha 2 times m minus m0. Okay. And condition on setting t equal t, little t. Um, so if you have an interaction term, you might also, this, this brief function might be a function of t as well. And if you have interaction between m and x, it would be also a function of x as well. So brick function basically uh, is the effect of m on the outcome given t and x. What well, the third step, final step of the structural nested mean models is subtract this effect of m from y using the observed value of m and x. Okay, so for each observation, you subtract this brick function evaluated at the observed m and observed x. So this is basically out adjusting the outcome by subtracting the effect of m on uh, y. Remember, the control direct effect is all about the effect of t holding m constant. So the observed y has both effect of m and effect of t, so we're going to subtract the effect of m holding the constant and then regress that on t and x. Regress that adjusted outcome y minus gamma t m x on the treatment and the pre-treatment quiets. And the coefficient for that treatment variable, uh, for the treatment variable in that regression, is the estimate of the control direct effect uh, with m held at the m naught, the particular value you picked in the computation of the function. So it's, it's relatively intuitive. Um, procedure where you first um, subtract the effect of the mediator uh, and then uh, regress this adjusted outcome on the treatment and covariates to get the control direct effect. So that's basically the structural nested mean models. Now finally, let's discuss the estimation of natural direct and indirect effects. And again, the linear model sort of is a simple case and gives some intuition. Okay. So here I wrote down three linear equations. The first one is regressing y on t and x. The second one is regressing the mediator on t and x. And the last one is regressing y, the outcome on t and m and x. Notice that there is no uh, post treatment confounder z because we assumed for the identification of natural direct and indirect effects, there's no post treatment confounder. Okay. So this um, uh, equation, there's three sets of equations, but you can see that the first equation um, is redundant given the second and third, because if I uh, simply sub substitute the second equation into the third equation by just you know substituting for m, then you get the first equation. So even though I wrote down the three equations, um, the first one is redundant given the second and third. Here in this linear models, um, beta one is a total effect because that's a regression of y given t and x. The direct effect is represented by beta three. And indirect effect or mediation effect is represented by beta two times the gamma. So gamma is a coefficient of the mediator on the outcome. Beta two is a coefficient of t and m. So once you change t from zero to one, the m will change on average by beta two, and then that gets multiplied by the effect of m on y. And that's basically the indirect or mediation effect. You can also um, compute the same quantity by just subtracting the total, uh, the direct effect from the total effect. Okay. So this intuitive uh, formula uh, works for the natural uh, direct and indirect effect. And the reason why it works is that we assume the way the existence of post and confounding. So the effect decomposition uh, is basically the beta one, which is a total effect is the sum of beta three, the direct effect, and indirect or mediation effect, beta two times gamma. 
there's a famous article by uh, two psychologists, by Baron and Kenny, um, which discuss the distinction between moderation and mediation. The moderation is about the how the treatment effect changes as a function of the pre-treatment covariates, whereas the mediation is all about how the treatment affects uh, treatment affects the outcome through the post-treatment compounder. So the Baron and Kenny made this distinction between how the pre-treatment um, compound uh, variable acts as effect modifier, which is the moderation, and um, how the post-treatment confounder acts as a mediator, um, representing causal path from the treatment to the outcome. And it's a very well-known and well-cited article. So you can also combine the moderation with mediation, called this moderated mediation, where basically the effect of the mediator um, is uh, conditional on the treatment. Okay. Then you have uh, natural direct, you know, natural indirect effect. There are two types of natural indirect effect. Uh, one, when the mediator is considered uh, with the treatment set to one, uh, versus the indirect effect considers when the treatment equals set to zero, and those two um, effects may not be the same if the treatment and mediator uh, interact with one another. Okay, so it matters whether you're holding the treatment uh, constant at one or zero, when you're changing the mediator from M of zero to M of one. Those um, two scenarios may give you different natural indirect effects. Uh, more generally, we can use the identification formula for natural indirect effect. Uh, this is often called the mediation formula, where we model the uh, regression function y given m, t, and x, as well as model, we have to model the uh, mediator given t and x. Okay? And then all you do is you set the treatment to 1, you predict the mediator m of 1, you plug that into the mediation function. Similarly, you um, set the treatment to the control condition, you predict m of 0, and then you plug that into the mediation function, uh, the regression function of y given m t x, and taking the difference will give you uh, the estimate of natural indirect effects. So again, you're going to predict m given each treatment value that gives you m of one, m of zero. Predict y by first setting t equal little t, m equal m of zero, and then do the same. Um, for um, you know when the uh, for m of, of m of zero and m of one, <clears throat> and then you're going to compute the average difference between these two predicted outcomes. Um, natural direct effect is also similar, um, but you can also estimate the natural direct effect is by simply subtracting the natural indirect effect from the total effect um, because of the decomposition formula we developed. 